It's actually Maui shapeshifter, demigod of the wind and sea, hero of men. I interrupted from the top, hero of men. Go. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Disney sidekick voice performances. Did Elsa build you? Yeah, why? Do you know where she is? Fascinating. Yeah, why? Do you think you could show us the way? Yeah, why? How does this work? Ow! For this list, we'll be looking at the actors who did the most iconic job behind the mic, embodying the studio's animated companion characters. We're focusing on film and excluding Pixar performances, as those deserve a list of their own. Which of these sidekicks would you want as your real-life buddy? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Jimmy McDonald as Jack, Gus, and Bruno, Cinderella. Cinderella, Cinderella, night and day at Cinderella, make the fire, fix the breakfast, wash the dishes, do the muffin. What's more impressive than voicing one Disney sidekick? Well, voicing three, of course. The late Jimmy McDonald did just that in Cinderella. We know Bruno doesn't speak so much as bark. But that doesn't change the fact that McDonald brought the Bloodhound to life with such ease, we forgot there was a man behind the mic. Now, as amazing as that is, we have to talk about the actor's portrayal of Jack and Gus Gus, the mice who help Cinderella get her happily ever after. Happy birthday! No, 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 no! The two couldn't be more different personality-wise, yet he embodied each of them completely, infusing the limited dialogue with whimsy and making each word count. Jack and Gus Gus are practically as iconic as Cinderella herself, and that was all McDonald's doing. Gus Gus! Gus Gus! Oh, come on! Rook! Rook! Gus up there! Come on! Number 9. Dwayne Johnson as Maui, Moana. What can we say to The Rock except thank you for this amazing performance? Physical resemblance aside, Dwayne Johnson fits the role of Maui so well that it feels like it was made for him. Honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was Maui just messing around. I killed a meal, I buried its guts. Sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. Yes, the demigod initially seems like anything but a reliable friend. At first, we fear he might even be a villain. But it turns out that as self-important and cocky as he can be, he's also struggling. Look, what I did was... Wrong. I have no excuse. I'm sorry. Not just that, he's actually got a pretty big heart and ultimately plays a pivotal role in Moana's journey to save her people. Through Johnson's portrayal, we see all those layers reflected on screen, and we come to empathize with and root for the character. He's our favorite demi guy. It was the water that connected them all. And if I were the ocean, I think I'd be looking for a curly haired non princess to start that again. Number 8. Danny DeVito as Philoctetes, Hercules. The greatest hero there ever was. So great, the gods would hang a picture of him in the stars all across the sky. And people would say, that's Phil's boy. Oh, Phil, what would Hercules and all of us do without you? Thanks to Danny DeVito, that's a question we'll never need to answer. Next time, don't let your guard down because of a pair of big goo goo eyes! Voicing a satyr who's cranky, cynical, and has basically lost hope while creating room for him to grow and soften up as the story progresses is no easy task. It takes more than sinew, comes down to what sinew, you have to continue to grow. Like Yet DeVito makes it seem like the simplest thing in the world, which is just a testament to his talent. Honestly, Hercules is filled with characters that shine bright, and Phil has no right to be as memorable as he is. So we tip our hats to the actor who turned him into the mentor we didn't know we needed, and made sure he'd never fade into the background. Dreams are for rookies. <laughs> no, 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 kid. Giving up is for rookies. I came back because I'm not quitting on you. I'm willing to go to distance. How about you? Number 7. Josh Gad as Olaf, Frozen Franchise. Elsa, Sven, Samantha. <laughs> I don't even know a Samantha. We may not know a Samantha, but we're sure glad we know Josh Gad's Olaf. The character can always lighten the mood and is one of the most lovable sidekicks around. He's silly, relatable, and trying to figure life out, but he also cares deeply for his loved ones, often walking into the unknown for them. This characterization works specifically because Gad leans into the snowman's wide-eyed, playful, and warm nature, 
making him a blast. Someday I will see that this makes sense. One day when I'm old and wise, I'll think back and realize that these were all completely normal events. The actor was actually able to ad-lib and put his own spin on the character, and he definitely made the most of that chance. Indeed, some of Olaf's most hysterical moments are the product of Gad improving. Turtles can breathe through their butts. <laughs> if you ask us, this is one voice acting performance worth melting for. Yeah, I bet she's the nicest, gentlest, warmest person ever. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> Number 6. Samuel E. Wright as Sebastian, the Little Mermaid. A wise crab once said, well, technically saying, that life is the bubbles under the sea. You could practically hear Sebastian belting out those words, couldn't you? We want the land folks love to cook. Under the sea we have to hook up. We got no trouble. Life is the bubbles under the sea. Under the sea. That's because his voice, which belonged to Samuel E. Wright, is instantly recognizable. Wright found a way to make the sassy crustacean both refined and theatrical, cautious yet adventurous. Yes. <clears throat> yes, your majesty. Plus, he gave us the unforgettable Oscar-winning gem that is under the sea. That alone certified him as a bona fide legend. With him and Flounder, voiced adorably by Jason Marin by her side, Ariel is in great company. All right, I'm going inside. You can just stay here and watch for sharks. Okay. Yeah, you go. I'll stand. What? Sharks? Ariel? You can imagine our joy when Wright reprised his role in a variety of The Little Mermaid's follow-up projects. We could never have too much Sebastian. Number 5. Eddie Murphy as Mushu, Mulan. Who should you call if you need someone who's full of spunk, chaotic but kind, and can diffuse the tension in any situation? The answer is Eddie Murphy, of course. Who am I? Who am I? I am the guardian of lost souls. I am the powerful, the pleasurable, the indestructible Mushu. He proved he could seamlessly capture all those traits and more through Mushu. His performance gives the small dragon an exciting larger-than-life presence and makes him not just funny, but compelling. It's hard not to watch and be obsessed with Mushu whenever he's on screen talking a mile a minute, because Murphy is just that captivating. Am I late? No time to talk. Now remember, it's your first day of training, so listen to your teacher and no fighting. Play nice with the other kids, unless, of course, one of the other kids want to fight, then you have to kick the other kid's butt. The talented actor kept the slam dunks coming after the 1998 Disney classic 2, lending his voice to Donkey in DreamWorks' Shrek movies. Hey, his animated characters aren't insanely beloved by accident, he puts in the work. On my honor, I am obliged to accompany you until you have saved your life and you have spared me mine. I'm sorry, the position of annoying talking animal has already been taken. Let's go, Shrek! Number 4. Nathan Lane as Timon and Ernie Sabella as Pumbaa, The Lion King. Okay, we know these are two people voicing two characters, but Timon and Pumbaa are besties, a unit, and the way Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella play off each other creates an unbeatable dynamic. Oh, he was a shame! I tried changing my name! What's in a name? And I fell down! Oh, how did you feel? I made time and I... Hey, Pumba! Not in front of the kids. Sorry. We firmly believe that no other meerkat and warthog duo could help Simba during his darkest hours. It's our problem free! Philosophy! Hakuna Matata! Hakuna Matata? It's our motto! Each actor gives their respective character a unique, entertaining, and fleshed-out persona. So when they come together, it's double the breezy fun. Honestly, they set the movie's voice acting bar so high that it's practically impossible to reach. Though, Rowan Atkinson's Zazu comes close. There's one in every family, sir. Two in mine, actually. And they always manage to ruin special occasions. <sighs> what am I going to do with him? He'd make a very handsome throw rug. Sazu. Luckily, Lane and Sabella brought Timon and Pumbaa to life on numerous occasions after 1994's The Lion King. Hakuna Matata indeed, because their performances leave us with no worries. Why don't we tell them our story? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we tell them our story? Oh, I like the sound of that. Number 3. Patrick Warburton as Kronk, The Emperor's New Groove. 
Listen up, big guy. I got three good reasons why you should just walk away. Number one, look at that guy. He's got that sissy stringy music thing. We've been through this. It's a harp, and you know it. Say it with us. Pull the lever, crunk. Wrong lever! Huh? Yes, he always pulls the wrong lever, and he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. But Kronk is impossible not to love. In fact, he's so endearing that it's easy to forget how, in the wrong hands, or should we say voice, Yzma's henchmen could have come across as annoying. But Patrick Warburton does an excellent job behind the mic, delivering comedy that never feels forced or distracting. I know I've seen you somewhere before. Uh, I don't think so. Wrestled you in high school. I don't remember that, no. no? Metal show. Oh, no. Oh, I got Miss Narka's interpretive dance two semesters. I was using it back because of my weak ankles. In doing so, he crafts one of the Emperor's New Groove's kindest, most amusing, and cherished characters with just his voice. If you ever need more Kronk, fear not. You can also catch Warburton doing his thing in the sequel and spin-off television series. Spoiler alert, he's incredible in those two. You see, Poppy, you may look at my life and think I've got nothing. But the truth is, I've got everything. Number two, Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Potts, Beauty and the Beast. Every supporting character in Beauty and the Beast is impeccably portrayed. Jerry Orbach became Lumiere, the theatrical candelabra. Be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. And David Ogden Styers delivered a timeless performance as Cogsworth. Now you've done it, Lumiere. Splendid. Just peachy. Ah! How is this accomplished? Put me down at once. Stop that. <laughs> but it's Angela Lansbury's Mrs. Potts that always stands out the most. It's a guest. It's a guest. Sakes a lot that I'll be blessed. Wines been poured and thank the Lord. I bet the napkin's fresh and we never thought we'd consider a teapot maternal, yet here we are. The character radiates warmth, and not just because she's full of tea. Lansbury infused her with gentle grace and care, creating a comforting, nurturing presence. Hail as old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast. We know Belle can trust Mrs. Potts whenever we hear her speak or sing, which says it all. Though Lansbury, Orbach, and Styers have all sadly passed, their legacy lives on through their Beauty and the Beast characters, which they voiced on multiple occasions. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Cliff Edwards as Jiminy Cricket, Pinocchio. This is what we imagine our conscience sounds like. Maybe you and I had better have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Why? Well, you want to be a real boy, don't you? Uh-huh. All right. Sit down, son. Jim Cummings as Ray, the princess and the frog. He makes us believe fiercely in Ray and Evangeline's love story. Look how she lights up the sky. My belle Evangeline. Charles Kimbrough as Victor, Jason Alexander as Hugo, and Mary Wicks as Laverne, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Their performances add a fun, lively dynamic to the classic flick. Who says you gotta ask? Oh, no. You sneak out? It's just one afternoon. I, I couldn't. And you sneak back in. You'll never know you were gone. And if I got caught, better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. Rosie O'Donnell as Turk, Tarzan. Could you imagine anyone else voicing this sassy sidekick? He's alive! <laughs> He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! You idiot! <laughs> you nearly gave me a heart attack, you happy? Phil Harris as Baloo, The Jungle Book. This voice performance delivers far more than the bare necessities. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Robin Williams as Genie, Aladdin Was there ever any question about this pick? As Genie in Aladdin and the King of Thieves sequel, the late, great Robin Williams delivered one of the most extraordinary performances of all time, period. He certainly didn't have to go that hard, but thank goodness he did. The ever impressive. The long contained... 
often imitated. But never duplicated. 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 His genie has everything you could possibly want and more, from a sense of humor and verve to complexity and heart. And don't even get us started on those impressions and the singing. Let me take your order, jot it down. You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> Life is your restaurant and I'm your maitre d. Williams seamlessly took a supporting character and turned him into an unforgettable, hilarious superstar, delivering a masterclass in voice acting and improvisation in the process. Let's blow this popsicle stand! A doorstop would be a fabulous career. <laughs> not bad! Good night, Alan! If you ask us, what he accomplished was not only truly magical, it was worth its weight in wishes. I love you. Come over here. Big group hug. Group hug. Ooh. <laughs> do you mind if I kiss the monkey? Mwah. Ooh, hairball. Well, I can't do any more damage around this popsicle stand. I'm out of here! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.